Is it because I still have this Jay Leno pimple? <laughs> <laughs> YouTube, it's Monday. So YouTube, on this Monday, Michael Fair is in New York City. He's with his family on vacation. I'm in the shop, Dez is in the shop. Uh, gotta get a lot of stuff done this week because Sunday, I'm actually headed out of the country. You ready for lunch? Yes. What are you hiding behind there, Whammo? Whammo, you're supposed to fart beforehand. When I get back, we're going over some camera stuff. Over the weekend, I went down to Red Rock again and did some nighttime exposure with some friends. I uh, got some awesome photos that I can show you right here. But yeah, I'll break these photos down and talk about what my settings were at um, in case any of you are trying to go out there and do these type of photos. So, see you in a bit. Hey guys, so we're gonna run to Costco, get some errands done, but before we do that, we wanna give a quick shout out to Justin Ulmer. Some OD Woodland over Carbon Fiber Blue. I don't know if anybody's done this before. I don't know, I like it. So Wingman, appreciate the support. Thank you, sir. All right, guys, so when we talk about these pictures, these nighttime exposures, a couple things to remember. I'm shooting with a full frame Nikon D850. Uh, for these photos, I was also using the Sigma 24 millimeter 1.4. Uh, that's their art lens. Um, every exposure was 20 to 25 seconds. Uh, I typically kept it around 20 seconds and the aperture was uh, varied depending on how much exposure I was getting. When doing nighttime exposures, uh, one thing to remember is the rule of 500. So you take 500 and divide that by the focal length, which in this case is 24 millimeter, and you get about 20.98. Um, so that what that tells me is that I shouldn't be doing any, my exposure should not be any longer than 21 seconds or I start to get star trails. So that's something to keep in mind if you're shooting with a 35 or an 85 or a 50, whatever you're shooting with, divide 500 by that number and that will give you a rough estimate of the how long your exposure should be in seconds. So on this first photo you can see uh, I did a portrait landscape. You can see that the Big Dipper is seen right here in the center. Um, the foreground is super clear. My focus was a little off, but I still like the image. <clears throat> um, again, remember these were shot at night, so we go and color grade this with Lightroom after. Um, next photo is one of my favorites. I got lucky and during my 20 second exposure I had two vehicles drive by. Um, so I got the headlights of one vehicle and the taillights of the other. Um, the only thing I really had to edit in this photo was the sky. Um, it, was, it was way darker, so I brought out more colors. You can see some of the blue in the, in the sky, but yeah, this is actually the uh, background of my iPad right now. I just really like the detail that you got on the road from that light shining off. Next one, awesome landscape of the mountains, and then this was when the clouds finally had cleared and we started getting a ton of uh, stars in view. When, one thing to note too, when you guys are setting your focus, uh, one good thing to do, find a star, find something that you can get focused on, manually set that focus, get it there, that way it's nice and crisp, and then leave it, and then don't touch your focus again throughout the rest of your shooting. Some people just put it in infinity focus, but that doesn't always work for me. This next photo, I um, ended up getting a vehicle coming uh, head on. So you can see as it starts to come over the hill, that's where that big burst of light is, and then you see the stream of it coming through. Um, I really like these shots, I think they're awesome. Um, just, I like to do a lot with uh, long exposures and light. Um, I think that having the actual photo with the landscape behind it and then that mixed in is just something really cool to look at. Here's one of my favorites too. Um, in post, I went through and made that beam a little brighter, a little more orange, so it looks like it's shooting over this, this hill right here. And then I also had to bring out the foreground of the dirt because it was pitch black. Unfortunately, the moon was still hidden behind the clouds there, so I couldn't get that to pop out. But yeah, so that's it for the photos, guys. Um, in each photo, I put the details of what I shot with at that time so you guys can play with it. Um, if you guys have questions about that kind of stuff, please comment below, shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to answer it. There's a bunch of good videos on, on YouTube about doing nighttime photography. But luckily for me, to get to that spot, it's only an eight-minute drive from my house, so we go up there frequently. But yeah, thanks for checking it out. As always, if you like these videos, please consider subscribing as we post daily five-minute videos Monday through Friday, and we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, over 